Hey guys, welcome back. So this is a part two video. I'm gonna talk about like an overview of what you will be covering in Fundies 2. Granted, every school is different, so I don't know, you know, which chapters your school will be covering first or whatnot. But I'm going by what I was tested on, I'm going by my notes, and I will be giving you guys, you know, possible test questions, things that you need to like emphasize on, and yeah, so let's go. So for Fundies 2, this is one of the chapters that I least like. It was just not fun, I don't really like anything like legal implication things like that responsibility i'm not into it but it was a big part of our exam one for fundies two so what you want to know is hipaa hipaa is a big one it will probably show up on your test multiple times um another one that like my friends and i we just totally don't like this it's the ethical principles <laughs> so you might know about it already. So it's autonomy, beneficence, fidelity, justice, and non-maleficence. Really know those. There's the, they just come up all the time. And it's so, we're like, my friends and I, we just don't get the whole like beneficence and non-maleficence. Like, oh, you do good, but you do harm. Like, just know those two. I kind of think of it, beneficence is more of helping others. And maleficence, you're preventing uh, medication administration error. That's how I kind of put in my head and that's how I stick to it. And yeah, you will be getting a lot of questions on autonomy. Like that's usually the option, but don't go by me. You have to read the question first. But most of our um, questions on ethical principles, the usual answer is autonomy. But always read the question. Don't go by it. Don't put autonomy just because I say every answer is autonomy. Um, you're gonna have to know all the, uh, yeah, you have to know about informed consent. It's a big one. What's its purpose? What can the nurse, what does a nurse do and what does a provider do? Um, and that's it. Just just really know that, you know, the nurse just witnessed that they signed this, um, the information. They cannot give any information out. Um, and if they do have a question, they need to ask, tell the provider, like, listen, you need to come back and explain it to her because you can't, the nurse is not doing the procedure. So you can't explain to the patient what's going on in the procedure when you're not do, actually doing it. So that's that. Um, you're going to have to know the advanced directive. So know the living wills, the dual, doable power of attorney and all that stuff. I totally didn't like that chapter but it, you have to know it um, know the definition of ethical dilemma and know the code of ethics the whole responsibility accountability confidentiality which is HIPAA um, you're gonna have to know the types of crimes and there's something on torts Okay, yeah, you're gonna have to know the torts. So assault, battery, and false imprisonment. And know that, just think assault is you're threatening someone. Battery is when you actually like grab someone, punch them, whatever it is. And then false imprisonment is when you have them like restrained. Like let's say they, they keep getting out of bed and you just tie them up and they're like, I can't get out. Like that's false imprisonment, you don't want that. Um, and you also need an order to restrain someone. So don't just restrain just because you feel like it or you're like not liking the patient. I don't know. So don't do that. Um, let me see what else we covered. Uh, delegation. Know what you can delegate. There's, we had to select all that apply on this question. Let me see if I find it real quick. Oh yeah, so right task, right circumstance, right person, right direction, right supervision. Know that and know, yeah, just know like there's a difference between the LPN and um, UAP. So really know the LPN, they could do a little bit more than UAP. Um, the ATI book actually has like a great, um, great way in explaining this. 
and they have like charts so you'll really know the difference what they can and what they cannot do what's their scope of practice um let's see what else nursing process we covered all of this in fundies one critical thinking infection control that's all fundies one hold on yeah and then you're gonna let me see what else we covered sorry i have you have a whole bunch of notes everywhere um we talked about the chapter on pain management so we have to know like the non-opioids opioids um what's their you know the pain tolerance you know some people may look like they're not in pain but you don't really know so always reassess um constantly ask them you know what's your pain scale from zero to ten ten being the worst pain um let's see know what a pca is um it's function can you overdose no um don't push the button for the patient <laughs> things like that it wasn't bad um okay that was surprisingly that was my exam one actually wasn't bad at all now that i'm looking at it i'm like wow i was freaking out for this um we also had hygiene you know about shower or care feet care um how to take care of it um you want to moisturize it but not like in between the toes um don't apply heat make sure they're wearing comfortable shoes if they're walking to the bathroom you want to make sure that they have like the sticky socks not the ones that they could slip and slide if there's anything in the way you want to remove that keep it keep the aisle clear it seems easy what i'm saying but for some reason in test questions i don't know what it is that you get like nervous and you start overlooking it i don't know why um Oh, I forgot to mention about mobility and immobility. You're going to be going into like the whole gates. Ugh, those gates drive me crazy. The four point, three point, two point. Yeah. Though, so, yeah, that's going to be on the test. <laughs> um, Let's see what I have over here. We were also tested on the chapter on older adults. Um, so you want to know between the difference between delirium and dementia, depression, um, any health concerns for older adults. Um, let's see. Some acute care setting for older adults, like their skin, what happens to their skin, respiration, they could have a decreased cough reflex cardiovascular there's a thickening of blood vessels uh gi there's that less saliva there's less gastric secretion so all these things kind of like connect to each other so you really want to have a feel on that um let's see we also went into sleep so make sure you know the whole um non-rem rem stage one two three four on non-rem um, which is your lightest sleep, your deepest sleep. Um, let's see. What happens if you're sleep deprived? And I'm sure us nurses, we all go through that. <laughs> let's see. Sleep apnea. That was another part of our test. Mm. Oh, this was a big one for our exam too. We went into the whole fluid and electrolyte chapters. This chapter on fluid and electrolyte is pure memorization. And I keep saying that word, but it is true. Like if you if you could really memorize all the signs and symptoms for each electrolyte, um, what happens if it's hyper or hypo, and the types of foods, you will be good for this because they could they're gonna put it in a critical thinking way, but if you know what um, if a patient has too much potassium what are you going to do? You're going to obviously restrict some potassium. So you want to know like what other types of foods you could give them. Which food has less potassium or has more potassium than other foods. Um, know the labs, like the, the ranges. So, you know, sodium 135 to 145. Potassium 3.5 to 5.0. All of that. Just look through all of that. Um, ABGs. That's 
that's awesome memorization. Like metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, uh, respiratory acidosis, re respiratory alkalosis. Um, let's see. We had a lot of questions on that. I would say we had 15 questions on just ABGs. So if you if you really take the time to understand this, it for me it kind of feels like a math question. If they give you a pH of 7.45 and the CO2 is 45 and HCO HCO3 is 28, like everything is metabolic acido uh, metabolic alkalosis, sorry. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. And just know that anything like respiratory acidosis is hypoventilation. And respiratory alkalosis is hyperventilation because they're blowing off all the CO2. Um, let's see. Yeah, the... Isotonic, hypertonic, hypotonic. All these things, I totally recommend you doing charts. Like, you need to do a chart... And just have like hyponatremia um, one side, hypernatremia, right? All the signs and symptoms and food. Make sure you have the food foods in there. And yeah, I think that's all I did. And I would even draw a picture like hamburgers, like what has too much sodium in it? Um, oh, something that we'd always get tested on is for hypocalcemia. I can never pronounce this, so I'm sorry, but it's positive Chovex sign and positive Trousseau, Trousseau sign. It's like when the nervous system, like, they like, I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> but it, they, it's like you, they, you tap the face and then like the nerve, like kind of like, mm, I don't know, look that up, but that's going to be on your test for sure. They like throwing in that. Um, muscle weakness. Think potassium, seizure, think sodium, FYI. And know that calcium and phosphorus, they work against each other. So whatever is up, the other one is down. And magnesium and calcium kind of work together. Oh, I wish I could show you. Let me show you this chart, what I did. I actually got it from Pinterest, so you could do the same. Okay, like I have all my signs and symptoms and I kind of spent a lot of time just staring at this like I feel like this gives you I, I, this kind of helps me on the exam this is all you need to know for ABGs and then obviously you need to know how to do the whole little calculation and analyze if it's respiratory or metabolic all that stuff so that was for our exam Two. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, and one more section for exam two. We had a, um things on blood transfusions. So if something um if they're having a reaction, they're itchy, they have like back pain. The first thing you want to do is stop the um the transfusion, and yeah, stop the transfusion. And leave the normal saline running. That's it. Like that's that's usually like the question that that they're gonna ask you. Um, yeah, that's about it. And then what hap What is um infiltration? What is phlebitis? Just know the definitions. And yeah, that was okay. So that was my exam too. That one was a little bit more studying. Um, for exam three, we went into grief. This chapter is like sad in a way <laughs> get to know like the different types of loss how to take care of a person um how to talk to them um palli palliative care hospice know the difference um end of life care we had a question on these like i can't even remember now but it's like a the a patient died and the family members like what can they do I don't remember, I suggest you guys to look that up, but like I remember getting that question wrong because it was a select all the apply and I could not remember like what they can do, like if they could shower, like I don't understand. So just look at, look, look that up. Um, 
We had bowel elimination, so you have to know like what's the Valsalva maneuver, common causes of constipation, diarrhea. Yeah, I know. You're gonna be studying poop now. <laughs> um, yeah, so know the factors that can affect bowel elimination, age, fluids, physical activity, whatnot. It's, yeah, this is an interesting chapter. Um, also know going back to fluid and electrolytes or not fluid and ABGs you know that diarrhea it's metabolic acidosis and vomiting is metabolic alkalosis people would get those two like confused so write that down on your notes um, you're gonna learn all the colostomies, ileostomies, loop colostomies these are like honestly like I feel like it's a lot of memorization like just learning it and once you get to the question you'll see like what kind of matches our professors is such um i love her she's the best she'd always say the answer to the question is in the question and the more i like think about it i'm like that's so true because there's like a keyword in the question that kind of leads to the actual answer if you study yeah if you study um know all the stool softeners so enemas laxatives um k exhalate they like throwing that in uh, we went into surgery that's one of the last chapters in the fundamentals book um know what they can know what they cannot take like medication wise a week or two weeks before surgery um Yeah, it's gonna go through a whole bunch of systems like the skin, what, like how often do you check or assess the skin? So you wanna assess the skin every four hours, you wanna turn positions every two hours, um, watch for any aspiration, big one, atelectasis, so make sure they're constantly like breathing, um, renal, you wanna check their urine, all these things, like you're gonna go through the whole function of the, the body. Um, Know the ranges for red, red blood cells, hemoglobin, uh, glucose levels, and all these things will carry on throughout your whole nursing um, student career because the more I look at these notes, I'm like, wow, I'm kind of covering this now in peds and I, you, sometimes you think, oh, like I, you're going to forget the information. At the same time, you will not forget the information. Um, let's see. Yeah. That was like honestly all of it. That, these are all my notes that I'm going by. Like everything that I've covered in fundamentals. Um, any tests. Like everything that I was saying was like almost a test question. <laughs> And I'm actually like, before I take my A3, which is my exit exam, I'm gonna go through my ATI book because look how small this is compared to this book. These kind of, this book actually narrows things down. It's to the point. Um, yeah, and it's, it's small, you could take it anywhere. I'm gonna go through this a few months from now look over this but now I was kind of going through this book while going through my notes and they were pretty similar back to back because just obviously this has more details but yeah don't be scared of fundamentals it's not that bad but even though like this is a class where a lot of people fail but just don't like just you're not gonna fail just study hard read the book okay i don't care what people say like oh I, I didn't read anything like i'm sure they did read so make sure you read the book take notes highlight use colors okay use tabs make any tabs here look so i write like these are all the chapters that we we covered um i did take for our school we have to take health and wellness before taking fundamentals so in that course we did cover some chapters and fundamentals that I did not cover in fundamentals if that made sense um yeah so really like really read and 
do a lot of practice questions. There's a fundamental success book. I think I have it. I'm not sure. I might sell that book because I don't think I'm going to use it again. But those have, they have great practice questions and it's like 80 questions per chapter, I think. And utilize Evolve. And the more practice questions you do, the better because they could only ask you in so many ways. So yeah, I hope you guys liked my little fundamentals of nursing overview. I will try to like simplify it another time and maybe go chapter by chapter and really like go hone in on it who knows but yeah if you like it please subscribe below um comment leave any information or video they want to see me talk about and i will be back i have to go study now so see ya